Welcome back, humans! You know what day it is. My name is Jaime, giving you the vents on headlines you didn't even know you needed. And with that said, hit me with a subscription, smash that like button, turn on those notifications because I'm here twice a week, and let's get on with some vents, humans! So they have this new Ministry of Truth, or whatever they're calling this thing. This is like a truth czar. I'm just kidding. Like, it's funny how, like, all of a sudden, now that, like, um, Elon, you know, buys Twitter and, like, talking about free speech and we're going to have free speech and all these things. And people was all panicking and saying, like, oh, shit, you know, the comet's coming to hit the planet now because he bought Twitter and all this crazy shit. Like, they were talking crazy on those other networks, you know, like, some crazy networks. <laughs> but I'll get there in a minute. This Ministry of Truth thing. So now all of a sudden the people that lie to us every day and the TV and on the news and our government, the guys, the people that just lie to us all the damn time, now they want to start telling the truth. And that's awesome. And this is like so convenient all of a sudden, like not like, so all of a sudden you now have to have somebody that is going to clarify what the truth is. That's pretty crazy. It's almost like you were admitting like other, sh the stuff before this was until this person has been put into this uh, position was bullshit <coughs> and then we choked on the bullshit just now and we slip on the bullshit and we step in the bullshit and we get our shoes and flip-flops and and all that shit stuck in the fucking bullshit it's crazy and we had enough humans but it's just bananas like now they want to start telling the truth the fact that now the time the fact that now all of a sudden is the time that they want to sign this like truth ministry or what i like to call lie blankets Yes, I call it lie blankets, humans. So they can just blanket you with, like, and tuck you in at nighttime with blankets of warmth and lies. That's why I call them lie blankets. This is what this new ministry thing is. It's called, it's a fucking lie blanket. It's a blanket of lies, humans. <laughs> it, it's a taste of betrayal. It's a betrayal, and, and it's a bitter taste. And I don't want to, I wouldn't go for this. But, um, like I said, this is really wild. But usually when someone talks about like all this, like they're going to clarify what's in, what's the truth and what's misinformation. It's most of the people that are talking about that stuff that are like super like defensive and aggressive on the shit are usually the ones supplying the misinformation. At least that's the way it's looked like, you know, just, you know, just recently. And maybe sometimes earlier today. They were throwing some shit at us. But anyways, humans, like I said earlier, the media was tripping and acting like, like I said, the comments are coming now and like aliens are coming, like all kinds of fucked up shit's happening because Elon bought Twitter. And they were talking all this pre free speech and they were talking about how it was like we're doomed because of free speech. And like shit is in people's in trouble now because of free speech. If he's really going to be free speech, like what if this is all a fucking big old fucking another fucking trick, you know, to get us all to jump in. Because <laughs> some say the 2004, like the iPhone was the fucking trick, was the first trick. Like we all had cell phones and the cool flip phones. And then they started doing the Matrix one where it all flipped up like a switchblade and shit. And everybody was like, oh, this, now we want more, you know. And then it was like flipping with keyboards and shit. And then the fucking Blackberry came on. And then here comes 2004, the fucking iPhone. And they say that's when everybody stopped thinking for themselves. They said at this time, people were still like original and unique and like coming up with new ideas and mainstream ideas like all the time. But they said when these phones came out, like these smartphones is when we stopped thinking for ourselves. And that's why we all like think on trends. Everybody's like thinking on a trend and they can't think of new shit. And that's why they're remaking all these bullshit ass movies. They were making Firestarter now. They try to remake Space Jam. Come on, man. Especially with the LeBron James in it. That's where you fucked up the first the, in the first place. You should just like another like you should have used somebody like Lil Bow Wow again or something just to fucking do something stupid. But no, you had to fucking use LeBron James and try to do the exact fucking same movie. <laughs> Man, y'all need to get creative again. But no, you can't because of these fucking phones, supposedly. But everybody's tripping <laughs> because my man bought Twitter. 
and we're going to have free speech. You know, like I said, and, and they're all like warning signs and the, the news is just tripping and flipping out on my man. <laughs> and I got a clip of some of the people, like some of their thoughts of like <laughs> what's happening now that he bought Twitter. <laughs> it's amazing. And I think it's uh, um, one worth sharing with all of you humans out there. So bear with me while I get this ready. And it's a little extreme, but highly entertaining. And here we go. If it worked. Is about free speech. Oh, here we go. Let me, re- let me restart it. Sorry. When Elon Musk says, wow, this is about free speech. It seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men. The right has already seized is this ground that they're on the side of free speech. They're really not. They're for the political version of yelling fire in a movie theater. Elon Musk, I guess he, you know, he misses the old South Africa in the 80s. He wants, he wants that back. Elon Musk buying Twitter says a lot about the priorities of people at the highest levels making decisions that could affect the fate of the planet. Do you see what I'm talking about? Like the meteors are like, all of a sudden the planet's in danger now because Elon bought fucking Twitter. <laughs> now he's in danger because he fucking Twitter. Come on. Like, did you? What? <laughs> She said it was the same as yelling fire in a movie theater. Are you fucking kidding me? Him owning Twitter was like a fucking bomb threat. (laughs) Humans, now I see why that Tandle Network, you know, streamer thing only lasted a month. They say they spent like like hundreds of millions of dollars to start the thing and didn't even have like 10,000 subscribers. They, They still probably had more than I did. But... (laughs) They <laughs> wasn't enough to sustain, and they had to fucking shut down on the streaming service. Nobody was watching you before your streaming service. What makes you think you're going to pay for your shitty service? But you're going to let those people say that shit on your channel? I guess they're supposed to. You probably pay them to, and that's bananas. But that's really extreme. <laughs> and what would... And what would, like, him owning Twitter threaten the planet? That's just really crazy to me. But... What is really, you know, this free speech thing? That's what I want to know, because like, how far does it go? I mean, I have a Twitter account. I got my own, my whole six followers. I appreciate you all. Y'all are awesome. (laughs) And they put like this warning label on all my tweets all of a sudden. I don't know if it was when, you know, just like all of a sudden there's like, it just says this may have sensitive content or some shit like that. I'm like every single one of them is like a little, we put this label here because it might have sensitive content. Does that mean that's going to be free speech? I mean, like I said, am I am I going to offend the whole six people that follow me? All of a sudden, they're the same ones they saw when I put them up the first time. But now all of a sudden, there's a warning label on the shit. I don't know how free this speech is going to be. If me with only six people, which, like I said, I appreciate you six. You guys are awesome. <laughs> but it's at Heim Time Vision, just in case you or at Ment Event, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Get me into double digits. No, just kidding. But uh, <laughs> but what, where does the free speech go? I mean, I don't know if that's like a me getting restricted. I don't know if that is. But I'm going to be patient because I'm expecting there's going to be a lot of changes going on while they're trying to, you know, um, make the transition or whatever of to new that a new ownership and, you know, things like that. And there's some employees that are all disgruntled, they're saying, and. You know, he said they can, you know, go take the highway if they want to, you know, quit or whatever. And he don't care. And so I'm I'm interested to see what those people are going to do. You know, there's probably going to be some kind of books now. Like they never even worked for the dude for like, and if they did, they worked for him for like a couple weeks and probably never even seen him or this last few months of this transition. They probably never seen him. But every single one of them guys that leave are all going to have a book about like my experience working with Elon. Like you didn't even see the dude. You were just fucking cleaning out your office and shit and, you know, tying up loose ends and trying to get a new job and working on your resume while you're getting ready to move out of there or finishing. You know, I don't care what you, you didn't even seem to do, but they're all going to have books on their working experience with them. They said like they got six months. So you got that long as to be like, oh man, it was just this, it was just such a lifetime, you know, come read my book. I ain't reading that shit. It could hurt the planet. Your book could hold the fucking hurt the planet. But like I said before in a previous episode, 
Should we just let it go? I almost kind of think we should. I mean, it'd be hilarious. I mean, you see the tweets Elon puts out himself are freaking hilarious. <laughs> you can't. I mean, his are super entertaining. <laughs> and uh, but then you you wonder because like like I love conspiracies. I'm gonna share one with you here in, in a minute here, and and then you got the people that put those really wacko things out there. There's some that aren't conspiracies that go into like. That has to be a new category. You can't put them with the conspiracies when they're them super outrageous. You know the shit ain't fucking a real fucking story when they're like, this is the same person and shit. Like Jamie Presley and Margot Robbie, Robbie are not the same fucking person. I'm sorry. And I might have liked your fucking video, but I, it's not. They're not the fucking same person. Okay, that one. You those ones should be like you know you know that obviously that one's fucking bullshit. Or how about the fucking all of a sudden like. <laughs> Or especially the ones, too, when you know it's a fucking fake-ass Bigfoot and you still fucking want to share the video. And they always show the fucking ones where the guy zooms in on my man's face. Like, I'm, or the Bigfoot's faces now. Like, you can see their faces. And they got, like, fucking Ewok faces and shit. And, like, fucking those motherfuckers fake as hell. Come on, man. And everything off the guy network. Because <laughs> all that shit is, like, production TV fake shit. I don't care what you say. It's some bullshit. But... On this conspiracy stuff, I just think it'd be crazy. I mean, I love to see the things, but I, th I think you got to filter some of the stuff that's just outrageous. That's all I'm saying. But I do have some conspiracy stuff I want to share because I feel like this is just a really weird cover up that bothers me. And I don't really want to let it go. So I plan on bringing it up as much as I can when I find out more info and more connections with my weird self. So here we go, humans. <laughs> No one still is talking about all the crazy, horrible things that happened to the young children and young other people and whoever else knows whatever happened to the other people on this Epstein Island. It made me think of um, an old conspiracy. Although this is a conspiracy itself, it made me think of this old one because I am a little bit older. And maybe there's like some possible connection with one of those old stories about, uh, say, what do they call it? Um, satanic ritual abuse. So in the 80s, there was this uh, young woman. I think she went by the name of Michelle something. Uh, what was her name? I think I wrote her name down somewhere here. Let me check real quick here. Give me one second here, humans. Uh, her name was Michelle something. Anyways, she was a young kid. And um, anyways... I guess she was a victim as a child of some of this satanic ritual abuse. And then it makes me think of this current time with this Epstein thing where there was young people and they say like they feels like they kind of get like in their mind and they're kind of like weirdly brainwashed. And then next thing you know, they're fucking jerking dudes off for money. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but I'm just saying, humans, I mean, <laughs> just bear with me here. Bear with me. So in this thing, they say, you know, these kids are like brainwashed and and. um then you hear all these uh, weird rituals, you know, they say that some and they say they saw like children and they saw human sacrifice and they saw people drinking babies blood. And but they're all through these crazy stories, which, you know, they discredit and they make them say they're all crazy lies. They could be, maybe not, you know, because they say it's a real uh, controversial technique when they do. Um, it's almost like that uh, memory recovery I guess they, I don't know if they hypnotize you or if it's a, sem, a sort of uh, hypnosis because they say that stuff can be um, can be tampered with because you hear stories of um, some people like interrogating people and young kids and they want to get them a confession where they're so aggressive where they're just like, look, man, you want to go home to your mom and dad? Well, then tell me this. I, this is what I want to hear. Tell me this. And they'll be like, OK, my man, you know, he touched me, whatever. I signed the shit. Boom. And then they fucking get him out the door. Like, and there's like forced confessions and shit, weird shit would happen, like in interrogation rooms all the time. You'd hear stories like that. I mean, even today. So there's so many connections when you hear these things, because like I said, it's always young children. You hear about what happened on the island. And then you hear about these young children disappearing all the time. So in 87, there was an old uh, Geraldo Rivera, uh, uh, what's his name? Geraldo Rivera, back when he was awesome. And like I told you back in the day when he used to do like all the real cool journalists and real controversial topics and, you know, things like that. And, um, they would get crazy on his TV show, you know, get a little, get a little tension on there, you know, it was really entertaining and wild. And then, um, so anyways, it was one of his old, uh, he put out this series 
and it was about this this sicko shit that's going on called the satanic ritual abuse. So he was claiming that there were over a million people in just our country that were Satanists and part of these like groups. And imagine if they're still going today. I'm sure that number is probably huge. You know, the number is probably like, you know, quadruple size. You're just probably like in the double digits now, you know, because you hear what celebrities sometimes, you know, they go out of this, the connections, you know, when you hear about the celebrities, what they do when, what they want to be, they say they ritual, they, the things they do, like selling their souls or whatever they do, these rituals to become rich and famous and stay rich and famous and, you know, reach higher levels of power in government and all these things. And you wonder if they really are connected or if they are part of these conspiracies. So as you go on, like I said, imagine maybe not. Like, and and why won't it be stopped? They asked even they asked even Geraldo back then, like, why wouldn't they stop it? And he said because they co-opt every every form and every branch of government or the pyramid of power or whatever, like all the way they worked their way all the way through to the White House. And they said that's how they became protected and empowered and he also talked about all these missing children that would happen. Like even back then in the eighties, there was thousands of missing children going to missing like every year. And some of them were be claimed, you know, possible part of these like rituals. And also a weird, crazy story in the eighties. You guys can look this up. Um, they found a, it was a shipping container and all these people, you know, it made the news and everything, man. It was full of like mutated um, babies and like formaldehyde or something like that. And like, in this shipping container, they're all mutated. They were, there was none of them in whole. And it was like, a, it made the news. It was really wild. And it brought up a bunch of stories about what was going on. I don't know if it was like some, you know, behind the scenes playing parenthood shit going on. Who knows? Or if it was part of this thing. You never just know. There's so many weird connections and so many weird things and so many directions to turn when it comes to following money or following these, uh, you know, things when it comes to missing children. Because you hear... Like or like the, there's a place by Oregon or those place by those lakes that we talked about in a previous episode um, where there's like under supposed underground tunnel systems. And they say like hundreds of thousands of children go missing every year, like in the hundreds of thousands, like and they say it's like over a quarter million. Like that's a lot. And, um, you know, I made jokes like watch your children and stuff like that. But for real, man, you really need to. Because, um, I mean, if anything like this would even. I don't know, man. It's just really crazy when you hear about these things. It could be possible connections. And if, and if this, like, I don't think the this thing stopped because, like I said, they don't even talk about it on the, they don't even talk about it in the news. They don't talk about anybody else being arrested, anybody else being in trouble. But yet this flight log list was gigantic. You hear these stories about what everybody did there. You see these pictures that you don't know if they're real or not. Like I said, um, it's it's an interesting thing. And what do they do? When these stories that came out, even back in the 80s, what did they do when this person had like a lot of definitive proof and witnesses and testimonies and, you know, confessions and yada yadas? Because I guess it even happened in some school back then. And it happened like they, they ended up having to like confession over 300 kids at one one place from these crazy people doing this like that were all part of this satanic group. So it is really weird when you look at think about it, man. I don't know if it's like it is connected but it's weird that it's all similar, similar, um, like similar ingredients involved. You know what I mean? Like there's similar ingredients involved in the recipe. So I could be way off on it, but to me, it just feels like it's very close. And then when you see this, like what, what do they do to every story? Even back then they discredit it. They'll make every part of this story seem like bullshit in any form of any other story like it bullshit. And they'll discredit it again. And this is like a cover-up that's going to be going on till the end of time, I believe. Who knows? But now they're like even more powerful to even cover things up. So because the technology, I mean, the technology caught up, you know, the talk, excuse me again. Um, The technology is just amazing right now. So it's like impossible for them to even slow down. It's even for them to cover up things even more. And it makes them even... um, able to reach out even more through technology itself. But I don't know, humans, like I said, it's real creepy. And that's my little conspiracy I wanted to share with y'all. And I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I'd appreciate it. If you hit that like button, hit that subscription with your notifications, because I'm here twice a week. My name is Jaime, and this has been another episode of Meant T.
to vent. Till next time, humans. See ya. Oh, yes, yes, y'all.